Joining us now is Florida Congressman Byron Donalds and former Deputy Independent Counsel Saul Weisenberg. Congressman, let's start with you. Do you think uh, Attorney General Garland has committed an impeachable offense? Uh, I, think, I think he has. And let's be very clear. You can't have the investigative arm of the IRS doing its job, wanting to bring felony charges, but then somehow with the political brass at the IRS and the political brass at the Department of Justice, it all gets slow walked, it all gets tamped down. They can't go get the necessary search warrants. They can't interview the right people. Some of the tests, some of the stuff that came out is they couldn't even pursue any use of the word Biden in some of their questioning. Like this is how ridiculous this is. And so for the attorney general to not know, and to also add to this, the chief of staff to the attorney general not to know what's going on, makes no sense at all. Well, not so I, knowing would be ignorance, but would it be an impeachable offense? You would have to yes. say that he's lying before Congress. Yes, if he knew this, but even, if, even if he didn't talk about it in front of Congress, if he used the power of his office to slow walk and to obstruct these investigations, that is an impeachable offense 100%. Now, Saul, you think that the first step should be having the AG and perhaps uh, the U.S. Attorney Weiss testify before Congress. So. If that's the case, what do you think uh, is the most important question for each to uh, have to answer? They, they can do this if, if they can just not grandstand and screw it up, Laura. They need to bring three people in. They need to bring David Weiss in, the U.S. attorney from Delaware. They need to bring the attorney general in. And they need to, to bring in the person who's probably in the thick of this, and we haven't heard anything from her. That's Deputy Attorney General uh, Lisa Monaco. The deputy attorney general runs the Department of Justice on a day-to-day -day basis. I can guarantee you that if uh, David Weiss didn't pick up the phone to talk to Merrick Garland, it would have been in all likelihood Lisa Monaco. And the first thing I would ask, there's so many questions to ask. The first thing I would ask Weiss is, were you commissioned as a special attorney? This special attorney they keep talking about that has the right to bring a case in any district without getting permission, you actually have to be designated and commissioned. Now, A.G. Garland says he had the authority from the beginning to do anything he wanted to. He had more authority than a special counsel because he was a special attorney. Well, when were you commissioned? Do you even now have a commission? It looks like from his last letter that he did not have a commission. Um, were you telling, here's a very simple thing that he hasn't spoken to. Did you tell the agents that you had gone to the D.C. U.S. attorney, Matthew Graves, and that he had declined? to let you bring charges, or to use Weiss's terminology, mm. decline to partner with you. Did the same thing happen in California? They can't say we, we can't talk about it because they've already gone out right. and explained what authority they had and didn't have. And These what are simple really question, concrete questions. And what simple question quickly Sorry. to Garland? Simple question to Garland is, it's the same question. Did you hmm. sign a commission? You say he had the authority. Did you, did you think did he actually that sign you could do it orally? Yeah. So it's... All right, Congressman, um, the letter that simple. Weiss sent to uh, Senator Graham noting this ongoing investigation we keep talking about, here's how MSNBC spun this. Watch. Was he saying that flat out, that this was not politically interfered by Garland, nobody from the administration, he went where he needed to go, he charged what he thought he could charge, and that this deal that he made, this plea deal, is not a sweetheart deal, as Republicans and this whistleblower are alleging, Ken? Well, we'd all like him to be that candid. He's constrained because the investigation remains open, so he's not saying all those things. Here we go again, Congressman. The investigation is ongoing, or he can't say it's because the things aren't true. What, which is it? Well, first of all, it's, it is a sweetheart deal because any other American would have been charged with a felony crime. Even the whistleblower, who was the head of the supervisory unit doing the investigation, said, yeah, we wanted to bring felony charges, but we were stopped because David Weiss couldn't bring those charges and we weren't allowed to do but any further But what is this ongoing investigation? This is what we, we don't know who's conducting it. We don't right. know if it's, of the, if it's of the president then there has to be a special counsel appointed. You well, can't have the Justice Department investigating the president. In my view, what you have here is this is the stonewalling effect by the political arms of the Department of Justice and, in, in some respects, the FBI as well. If it's always under investigation, right. I never have to get to an endpoint until it's too late. That's how the, the, the statute of limitations expired under Hunter Biden with keep the other going. money. Just keep it going and so, keep turning. So I'd like you to chime in on that. We don't really know 
anything about this continuing investigation, do we? Oh, I don't think there, we don't, and I don't think there's any kind of a serious continuing investigation. And what a farce if it's being handled by, by David Weiss. But let me just make, make something really clear. Forget about anything else, about the bribery allegations. I'm going to tell you, as a white-collar defense attorney for the past 20 years who's handled a lot of tax cases, uh, what you need to change a misdemeanor into a felony is an affirmative act of concealment. And the record is already from the whistleblowers uh, abundant in that. Let me give you a hint. If you, take your, if you take your girlfriend to a sex club and then expense that as a business expense, that's a classic affirmative act of concealment. If you lie to your attorney who asks you questions about why you did this on your taxes, that's a, an affirmative act of concealment. It's, it's not even close. Uh, pretty obvious here. Congressman and Saul, great to see you both. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.